everybody out there in YouTube land and welcome back to day 10 I think day 10 and if you want to hear our thoughts on a little TV episode holiday classic a, a little episode from or the Crypt Keeper himself all through the house stick around on, on the 10th day, day of Christmas my true love sent to me 10 from the Crypt Okay, so why are we reviewing an episode of Tales from the Crypt? Okay, well, for two reasons. One, this is the first time I've had this, like, shirt since I was younger than Sparky is, way younger than Sparky is, and this is the first time it's been appropriate to wear it, so I'm gonna fucking utilize it. Also, the real big reason here is because Jen doesn't do time management well, and when we were planning this, I forgot that my youngest son's birthday is today, and so, like, we just did, we had a movie, we were gonna do a movie for you guys, but I was like, well, I want to spend time with Jake, so it's nothing against you people, it's just I love my son a little more, I'm not gonna lie to you, I love you guys, but I love my son more, and I just wanted to spend some time, and so I thought, well, let's, let's compromise, because I still wanted to bring you guys something, but I wanted to do something that that was a little quicker that we could just get up and get gone and I think this is a really and this is also an episode I've been wanting to talk about forever because I love Tales from the Crypt. Yeah for those of you who've been here for a long time you remember one of our early videos was her top 10 Tales from the Crypt episodes. Yeah. Also uh, we are this is kind of a pilot episode for something we might be planning sometime next year of doing a Tales from the Crypt retrospective after we finish Masters of Horror. So, yeah. We're going like, to see how you guys if like If you like this and would like to see us talk more Tales from the Crypt sometime Leave after Masters of Horror. Leave a comment down below. Yeah, because we are, we, after we finish Masters of Horror, we are thinking, which will be coming back in February. Yeah. Um, we are, we were thinking of doing Tales from the Crypt next. So, yeah, this is kind of a pilot episode to that. Yeah, but, and all of it, and this is also a great Christmas episode. The great Larry Drake is in this, and any of you Dr. Giggles fans, plus other horror movies, but the one that we all know him for is Dr. Giggles, plays a deranged Santa. Also, this is just a such a fun episode. I love how how we open up, and it's in. We're hearing Nat King Cole singing his Christmas music, and you just a wide sweep of a house decorated to the hilt in Christmas. You have beautiful snow, and this is the most. It's fake. I know it's fake, but this is the most beautiful snow in any episode, any Christmas type show I've ever seen. I fucking love the snow. And um, I also, this is Jen, this, the, the, our main character in this is not the deranged Santa, but our other main character is a woman, and she is so Jen. I could see me doing this, and I just love it. She's she's with this bastard, and she decides, you know what, I've had enough, and she it kind of implies she has a lover, you know, as you do, and she just gets in with a poker. Merry Christmas, you son of a bitch. We were watching this. You quoted almost every single fucking line of this I would episode. love to play I'm this I'm surprised part. this didn't make your top ten list. I love it. how much you quote th it. There were so, there's so many. There's there so, so many, many great episodes of Tales from the Group. We love this show, and for those of you who don't know. This is just brings the dark side of Christmas. Also, uh, uh, um, also, it's just, it's just so much fun. And I love, it has that macabre kind of glee with it. Because, you know, she should be concerned that there, when she finds out that there's an axe-wielding, murdering, Santa out. Yeah, she's a little concerned and she's also a good mom. She might be a murderer, but let's give this to her. She's a great mom. She's yeah. a great mom. The, little, the few scenes we get with the daughter. She's sure, a very yeah. attentive and loving mother, which, you know, she can't be all bad. You know, if you're a good parent, you know, even if you're a murderer, if you're a good parent, then you got some redeemable qualities in you. But I love how she, like, yeah, yeah, it's more of an inconvenience for her. And then she turns around and uses it to her advantage with another great line that I saw. Oh, no, officer. I didn't kill him holding the axe. Santa did. I just fucking love this episode. It's so glee and naughty or nice. There, there's some really damn good bits of this. This is really, this is a really great showing of like what Tells from the Crypt would definitely become later mm -hmm. on. You know, it, it sets up. There is some weird stuff about it though. Like our Crypt Keeper opening is fucking bizarre. Because we have probably the creepiest fucking thing that was ever shown <laughs> in this TV, in this entire series. Of this fucking weird Santa mask that the Crypt Keeper's wearing. And the whole opening, it almost makes me question of whether or not this was supposed to be. Because I think this was one of 
the, this you were saying this was the one you if I to... remember correctly they that this was the first episode that HBO aired I could be I wrong believe but the, I, I know the production order was... the man who knew uh, the man who was deaf was the first yeah. one but I think this was the first one that aired which makes me question whether or not like they were gonna have a quick because the Santa designs the mask they have is a little bit closer to the original EC comic script keeper than the one we'd all know now so I almost wonder and then they go to the puppet at the, for the final bit but yeah I almost it's a weird fucking mask it's creepy it, it definitely shows that this is a very early on episode they were still very much trying to figure out what they were doing with this series but it still strangely works oh, definitely, for all definitely. of it it still strangely works uh, I guess the only con I have with this is our child actor there are like just a few nitpicky things like one I, I asked this the kid is stupid no the kid isn't stupid I don't like to call anybody stupid but the kid like you would think with all the commotion going down she would hear it and you know even at that young age I know magic and wonderment and all that but I know my kids and me at that age if we saw a Santa Claus carrying an axe coming up to our house we wouldn't our reaction wouldn't be here Santa I'll help you don't slip silly old Santa it's a very <laughs> the kids I'm gonna say it the kids stupid no the kids um, not stupid it's just it's just I, I know you boys wouldn't have done that I wouldn't have done that but then again we all grew up watching horror and we knew some asshole in a Santa Claus suit carrying an axe does not equal good times. <laughs> it's just, it's just, even me who does not do math well, that's one equation I can, even Jen can figure out. See, Santa plus axe on Christmas Eve, it does not, it usually ends in a rape if you're watching, if you go to some of your cl classic formulas. She's not wrong. <laughs> But yeah, the, but the kid is a little bit, yeah, you kind of question. And also the end scene where, you know, I, and he didn't even have to come down the chimney. I let him in, you stupid little, you know, I'd be like, and she just, no, no. And like the kid's just standing there and I don't know, it just doesn't feel true. And I know you're going, Jen, it's a Tales from the Crypt episode and I know, but it still has always bothered me. And this is the last time I'll get to talk about it. It bothers me. That I would be ashamed! Especially because her mother is such a murderess, but I do love our closing segment with the Crypt Keeper, and he goes, Oh, don't worry about little Carrie. This particular Santa preferred older women. I, even as a little kid, I love that joke. I just, the pervert in me, I was like, joke. it's a good joke. Um, and besides the kid, do you have any cons? Not really, like I said, it's definitely one where you can tell the early, this is very early beginning of the sh uh, show when they were still figuring out a lot of ideas and what they wanted to do. But it, it definitely is a, 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 a episode that really set the mark of what Tales of the Crypt was all about. Like, because man who's uh, the man who was deaf was a lot more serious of an episode than this, and even uh, Dig That Caddy's Real Gone also is a lot more. Really, a lot of season one is way more serious than, than they most. Would go in the than they would seasons. like. Sure, the Crypt Keeper has a lot of punny uh, puns and shit, but overall, like the episode the, itself, the, a lot of them are way more serious in season one than they are that the series would go on later. Which I know plenty of people prefer that style, but I actually quite uh, you know this one really sells. Yeah. This is what we want to do with this series. Exactly, and I also do, and it's Christmas. It should be a little bit of a lighthearted. You know, I can't think of anything more lighthearted than a crazy uh, axe wielding Santa. Who, who I love it. I love the the whole thing. And this would be such a Gen thing because if I were to kill some bastard, like if you guys had a bastard stepfather, but you know what? I will say this. I'm not judging an, her parenting skills at all. But I would have you boys away before, I, like, just you know, mm. worst case scenario. If I was gonna kill some bastard stepfather of theirs. I would do, I would send the boys to their grandmother's house. I wouldn't want you guys to, be, not because I'd be worried you guys would be dumb enough to open the door to an axe wiggling Santa, mm -hmm. but just because I wouldn't want you boys in it. I wouldn't have to make you lie, testify, and lie under oath. Mm -hmm. I'm that kind of mom. I'm That's considerate. Great. That's great. Um, I guess real quick, because uh, this segment is based off an old EC comic, uh, how do we feel about the adaption of it in the 70s Tales from the Crypt film? Because oh, they're basically gonna... the exact same story. Um, I, uh, okay. With different actors and slightly different cinematography. They all pretty much lay out a one-to-one. -one. They're both really good, but even though they are very similar, the, the, this one, the, 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 the Tales from the Crypt episode, this the 80s one, is a lot, it has more of a lighthearted glee. Like, even though it's very dark, it's funny. Like, there are some lines, like, you could, couldn't join a gym membership, could you, Joseph? How about a nice cold plunge? I mean, there's a lot of little humor in this that's funny, where the other one, it was a lot... It's, it's a lot less jokey. It's yeah. way less 
jokey. It has a more sedate feel, and and they both work. It gives if you want more of a creepy kind of like this is fucked up kind of thing. But I kind of like personally, I prefer the. I'm actually with you. I do prefer the ep the TV's episode. Now, not to it. say that the that the original, the one from the movie, isn't bad. Oh isn't no, good. The, it's good. It's real good. The second in the Tales from the Grip movie is excellent. We'll probably that's another. It's a movie. fun one. That's one of those movies we'll probably talk about someday. Maybe before we even talk about the show itself. But uh -huh. that movie has a very interesting history, and all the segments are very damn solid. I I hate the one with the dogs and the old man. That one always made me sad. Um, but yeah, that's a good point. I'm glad you brought that up because I, uh, yeah, I like that one. I respect that one, but it, it's kind of just a personal preference. Um, I respect the one, but I, I usually watch the, this is something I usually do watch every year at Christmas because I just think it's such a fun episode. And I love that Larry Drake is there before we all know who Larry Drake was with his bad Santa teeth and his crazy. I, I love that. And I, I just think it's really, really fun. And I, th and I love the snow. No, the mm. snow is just awesome. It's a weird thing to be a praise for this channel, but fuck it, that's beautiful snow coming down. Feel that. My only con really is the little girl. Like, I would be ashamed of you or your brother. My only I, con is also the little girl, but I would just say she's a dumbass. <laughs> I wouldn't say she's dumb. I mean, I get that there are children who are, you know, more dumb, innocent. Yes. Not dumb, more innocent and, you and know, dumb. and pure of heart and all that. And that's fine. And it's stupid. just no. No, I don't like that word on anybody, but, uh, but more. Uh, but she, you know, more of an innocent type thing. No one in this household, but I guess there are children who might do that. But if it had been me, I would have been like, oh, I've seen Silent Night. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so I'm sorry this one would. Do you have anything else to say? No, not really. Okay, guys. What did you all think of this backdoor pilot to tell us in the crypt retrospective for like sometime next year? Yeah, let us know down in the comments. And we're sorry this one was short, but like I said, I just want to spend some time with my little guy because he turned 11 today, my baby. <laughs> um, so yeah, but so with all that, but we still hope you've enjoyed this episode and um, thank you for staying with us uh, through our 12 days of Christmas. And we'll be back tomorrow with day 11. And as always, well, we love you guys. We hope you've enjoyed it. If you're new around here, please hit that subscriber button. And as always, we wish you a good day, a good evening, and we'll see you back for day 11. See you tomorrow, guys.